In this week's video, we'll review the latest technicals and fundamentals to help us answer the question, are stock market bears finally going to have their day in the sun? Clients and regular viewers may remember in the April 5th, 2019 video, we covered an extremely rare shift in S&P 500 weekly momentum that had only taken place 16 previous times since 1950. As of Friday, May 17th, 2019, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has now closed lower for four consecutive weeks. Thus, it's logical for us to ask, has the four-week pullback in the stock market negated this April 5th analysis that we covered a few weeks ago? Quickly, let's review the basic setup from the April 5th analysis prior to updating it to the present day. Weekly MACD dropped below the center line on November 23rd, 2019. Weekly MACD stayed below the center line for 98 calendar days, recaptured the center line on March 1st, 2019, and then on Friday, March 29th, it printed the fifth consecutive weekly close above the center line, producing an extremely rare shift in S&P 500 momentum. If we fast forward seven weeks to Friday, May 17th, 2019, despite the recent pullback in the stock market, the S&P 500 weekly chart still was able to print the 12th consecutive weekly close above the center line. If we know the answer to these questions, it might help us assess risk and reward going forward. How many times have we seen a similar setup with the 12th weekly close above the center line looking back 70 years? Which is basically another way of asking how many of the original 16 cases were able to make it to the 12th week without giving up the advance in weekly momentum? As we noted on Twitter earlier this week, sometimes when you update a market study, you get surprising or unexpected results. So let's reveal the answers to our questions and then see what we can learn from it. With the most interesting question being the one in the center, how many of the 16 cases were able to make it to the 12th week? When we performed the analysis this week, the answer was all 16 of the previous cases. Why is the answer in this case surprising? You would think that if we took these 16 cases and walked forward seven weeks, that at least a handful of the cases would have run into some type of fundamental or headline issue that caused weekly momentum to reverse in a significant manner. One possible explanation relative to all 16 cases walking forward 49 calendar days and still maintaining a bullish look on weekly MACD is the concept that markets operate more on psychology than on fundamentals. Thus, from this point here in December of 2018, a very rare psychological shift started taking place. And if we really think about the way the stock market works, what really happened down here? The large institutions did their homework and they looked forward and they figured the economy probably was in better shape than most thought and they believed that this was a good time to buy. And that buying power and shift in their perceptions regarding future economic outcomes resulted in a shift in momentum in the present day that had only taken place 16 previous times in the last 70 years. To answer this question here, what happened next in the stock market, we updated all 16 cases from the 12th consecutive weekly close above the center line after being able to meet the original criteria specified in the April 5th video. In the historical cases, these dates represent the 12th weekly close above the center line. So these dates here are very, very similar 
in terms of the rare setup similar to May 17, 2019. This table shows S&P 500 performance walking forward from the 12th weekly close, which would be similar to walking forward from May 17, 2019. For those of us with a longer term time horizon, figures like this are very attractive. Looking two years out from the date of the signal, 100% of the 16 cases were green, with an average gain of almost 29% and a median gain of almost 26%. The fact that those numbers are close together speaks to the consistency of these numbers here. Next logical question that can help us walking forward from May 17, 2019. What type of short-term drawdowns did investors have to endure to capture the favorable historical returns shown in this table here? So now we're looking at the maximum S&P 500 drawdown, looking out six months and walking forward from the date that is similar to May 17, 2019. And since the average and median figures are the most relevant to May 17, 2019, let's focus in on the summary portions of both tables. These are S&P 500 returns. On the top, average and median returns. This is the maximum drawdown table walking out six months. You see in the first 60 days, 68% of the cases, the 16 cases, produced positive returns in the S&P 500, which also tells us some of the cases produced red outcomes in the first two months, telling us to keep an open mind about all outcomes. Three months out, 81% of the 16 cases produced positive returns. Six months out, that number jumps to 88%. One year out, it's an amazing 94%. Two years out, 16 out of 16 cases produced positive returns. And three years out, we still have a very favorable 93% percent positive rate relative to the 16 historical cases. And 94% of those 16 cases had a drawdown less than 6%. Two months out, it's 88%. Three months out, 88%. And six months out, 81% of the 16 cases experienced a maximum S&P 500 drawdown of less than 6%. Let's just say hypothetically two years from now, the S&P 500 is roughly 26 to 29% higher than it is today. Most of us would be extremely satisfied with this type of return looking out two years. However, we know that everybody wants to make money in the stock market. And we also know in life Everybody wants to be successful, everybody wants to be in shape, and everybody wants to be happy. But the reality is, in life, we know that not everyone is successful. Many people are out of shape, and many people are unhappy. In many of those cases, not all of them, it speaks to some form of a lack of discipline. For the average person in the United States that's in decent health, getting in shape is not rocket science. You do not need to go on a diet. You don't need to do anything special. You basically need to exercise, cut out junk food, and eat better. And if we want to capture satisfying returns two years from today, history tells us that we are going, we know with 100% uncertainty there's going to be drawdowns between point A and point B, and in some cases there could be gut-wrenching volatility between point A and point B, which tells us if, and that's a mighty big if, if the next two years looks something like this, and that is to be determined. All of this just speaks to the probability of good things happening walking forward in 2019, 
relative to the probability of bad things happening. If good things happen, we know with 100% certainty some form of discipline is going to have to take place in here to capture these returns. And under our approach, if 81% of the cases from this point here experienced a maximum drawdown of less than 6%, then in most cases we would sit tight and withstand that volatility. It's also possible that when we walk forward in the present day, we're going to see very large drawdowns. And in that case, we probably would be taking some form of defensive action based on the facts in hand as they evolve going forward. Maximum flexibility, keeping an open mind about all outcomes. 14 out of the 16 historical cases did indeed experience an additional drawdown relative to the similar setup that we have today on May 17, 2019. It's easier to be disciplined if we have realistic expectations about a wide range of outcomes. May 13th, short takes post. This is Monday of this week. It was the biggest drop. As of Monday's close, the S&P 500 had experienced a drawdown of 4.55% based on closing prices and 5.17% using the intraday high up here and this intraday low here. As we noted on May 16th, short term, the market seems to be bouncing between these two gaps and really hasn't made up its mind yet. And since Monday, to date, is still the lowest closing low and this is still the lowest intraday low that we've experienced thus far in this pullback, these figures are still accurate. It's prudent to keep in mind there is also a small three-point gap here on the S&P 500's daily chart. This high is 27.44. This intraday low here is three points higher at 27.47. Hypothetically, if the S&P 500 decides to fill this gap and goes back and tags 27.44, these maximum drawdown figures would increase to an intraday drawdown of 7.11% based on this high up here. And on a closing basis, if we closed at 27.44 hypothetically, the drawdown would be 6.85%. And that seems to mesh up extremely well with the analysis we just covered historically where walking forward to the dates that were similar to May 17, 2019, the S&P 500 experienced an average decline somewhere in the neighborhood of an additional 2 to 3%. And this figure here is roughly 2% lower than the figure that we have as of the close on May 17th relative to the maximum drawdown so far. There's nothing magical about gaps. If we move in this direction, this is simply a reference point or an area where we might be ready for the market to hold and reverse. should also be noted, when we came down here, this gap had already been Filled, and that's why this gap was the gap that was on our radar. In terms of backtracking, we have not filled this gap here. All of this just speaks to expectations. If we get down here, we shouldn't be shocked. And we noted in the May 6th short takes post with this title here, going down to 2722-ish from a technical perspective would also make some sense. Quickly, let's update our roadmaps that we originally covered on January 11th in these weekly videos. We do have some deterioration here, but keep in mind, this is a visual proxy for the type of data tracked by the model. In our case, the model governs our decisions. And as of May 17th, 2019, the shift in the model is relatively tame thus far. 
it's still hard to make the argument that May 17th looks a lot like any one of these four bearish cases. That is obviously subject to change. And relative to the four bullish cases that we've been covering in these videos since January of this year, here, price goes back into the moving average cluster. Here, we drop on a closing basis below all of the moving averages, telling us relative to this historical analogy, a close down in this area wouldn't be shocking. Obviously, the longer that we stay down here, the more concerning it would become. And in this case, we stayed down here for a very short period of time and short stay moves can have a lot of information. Walking forward in the present day, we're open to all outcomes. We will continue to take it day by day. As we noted in this May 8th tweet, given the ongoing fluid situation with trade, we are not taking anything for granted. In the present day, is there any reason to believe that we could get a bounce back similar to this bounce back in 2016? And the answer is yes, from odd stats with the same Twitter handle shown here. As mentioned earlier in the video, at the end of this week, the Dow closed lower for four consecutive weeks. This table shows the last 20 times something similar happened and 18 out of the 20 cases produced a green week on the fifth week, helping us keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes over the next five sessions. Anything on the economic front telling us to keep an open mind about new all-time highs in the S&P 500? The answer is absolutely positively yes. Friday, the conference board's leading economic indicators came out. According to Urban Carmel's Twitter feed, here's his Twitter handle here. Leading economic indicators at a new cycle high in April. In the past 50 years, LEIs have peaked typically three months before the S&P 500 peaks, implying that we have not seen the last all-time high in the S&P 500 if history is any guide relative to economic data. As noted last week, we've been talking about higher odds of a 4 to 10% pullback for several weeks. There's a slide from the April 19th weekly video. In this rare shift in weekly momentum, and shift in perceptions regarding future economic outcomes that's only occurred 16 times in the last 70 years is a common theme that keeps popping up in our bird strike research. It's a very, very similar concept here. Here's a slide that we covered in January of this year. This is a similar shift in perceptions about future economic outcomes. Similar shift in perceptions led by institutions, led by institutions thus far relative to the breath thrust that we've seen. Very, very difficult to say that this move has not been led by institutions. Have we learned anything that can help us in the future with rare bottoms like this, this, and this? The answer? Absolutely, positively, yes. Here's one small anecdotal example. This is one of many charts in our overbought, oversold list that we've created. Two things jump off the page here. We said the decline that we experienced in December of last year, or at least the decline that ended in December, was extremely rare. How rare? Well, based on this indicator, never seen before. This indicator was more oversold in December of this year than it was at any time in 1998 during the dot-com bust bear market. And this level of being oversold here, this extreme even exceeded the extremes during the financial crisis. This was an extremely rare and difficult period. 
as we've mentioned in the past, if it's happened before, it can happen again. And I can assure you, we will be much better prepared going forward. And it is a chart like this that helps the institutions decide that they might want to buy here, here, and here. Extremely oversold level. This is what happened in the S&P 500. Extremely oversold, good things happen. Oversold, good things happen. Oversold, good things happen. Similar setup, except it was more extreme than any one of these setups that occurred in late 2018. Another takeaway here, there's nothing magical about this. This is not a buy signal. It is a pay attention signal. It's a have a cash file ready signal in case the S&P 500 decides to go up 5% in one day as it did in January of 2019. When the institutions decide to step in, in many cases, really good things happen in the S&P 500. And a big part of the bird strike project is to make sure that we are thinking like large institutions and that in the future, we are ready to go like the large institutions. Let's talk a little bit about the trade war's impact on S&P 500 or market momentum thus far. This is the close on May 17, 2019. You'll notice weekly MACD is well above the center line, telling us that this pullback from a probability perspective is most likely a normal and to be expected counter trend move within the context of an existing weekly uptrend. In fact, we don't even have confirmation yet that we're in a counter trend move within the context of an uptrend. For that to happen, we need to see a bearish cross. That may indeed happen, but that would only imply still a counter trend move within the context of an existing uptrend. Haven't seen either of those yet. Head into next week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. It may also be worth a visit to the new website to see the FAQs. We've got new and expanded FAQs covering traditional investing, low-cost passive investing, and the online slash robo strategies that are currently in vogue. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.